welcome back to this week's vlog. Good day today. I've just completed the second of our council licensing, one for Icarus Falconry last week, or was it the week before? And today we've just sorted our uh, animal activities license here at Raptor Exotics. Really good feeling, two different councils, two different council inspectors to work with. Both brilliant ladies, to be quite honest. Um, obviously, they admit they don't know. Today, the lady didn't know anything about these kinds of animals. Her, her job's massively wide ranging. It could be a category of stables or uh, someone's venomous snake license, if you like. So, very, very different. Really common sense people. A lovely feeling to get that out of the way. All that paperwork, all that messing around, and, and so on and so forth, all in order. Obviously, as always, the, the exotics room, reptile room, looks as good as it always does that door needs painting but everything's ship shape and tidy as it always is um i've got some little tiny baby snakes growing on there once they're feeding and settled and established they'll be going to their new homes um and everything's typical with snakes they were fed yesterday there's nothing to see most of them are out of the way and hiding and a lot of the lamps are off on most of this room now, due to the massive heat wave we're still having here in the UK. Um, pest control, no one likes a fly. Um, so, what did we do to celebrate? Well, we're, we've both got the day off now, if you like, Jackie and I, Jackie's got a day off. All the, the blue beauty snakes, if you've seen them before, they've moved it down here. They're gonna have full spectrum lighting, but I'm gonna set that quite dim, to be honest. Um, what have we done to celebrate? Well, puffed out now. Jack is pressure washing the patio but we just popped to the local garden centre like a mile away uh, to get a couple of plants. Brought myself a fig tree for the Mediterranean garden. <coughs> I think I need an inhaler. Um, and I went to the local sort of garden centre pet shop where there's a few reptiles and things like you do. Jackie was looking at stuff. I'm going to look at the animals. Have a look at these. I'm going to flip the camera around. Just by chance they've got some tiger hissing cockroaches. Now my giant hissing cockroaches are the mainstay of many of my school talks. That they're just a benign, totally benign animal that kids can touch and stroke, but they've got a real creepy, crawly effect. Well, these guys are pretty big, so I'll flip the camera around and show you how I rewarded myself for working hard for that license. <laughs> so look at these, these are pretty big. Pretty big cockroaches on there. I asked, well, I didn't ask. I kind of actually got them out myself. The shop assistants weren't exactly too sure what they were doing. Uh, I said I want a pair and they said I don't know how to tell the difference so have a look at that oh, what a beastie so very much the same as my hissing cockroaches but I've got to say, oh, don't you escape I've got to say this guy's bigger but look at that kind of it doesn't really show up to real life there you go almost stripy looking so he's a big old male and there's a female in there as well so hopefully we'll start a colony of these just like we've got a colony of the our more normal sort of chestnut brown hissing cockroaches but you can kind of see it's a pretty big old a big old creepy crawly there let's just move him hold on that upset him he did actually hiss that was good. Oh, there he goes he's angry get back in so you can see or hear where they get the name hissing cockroach hissing like a snake <laughs> shoot hissing like a <laughs> Hissing like a snake if they're startled to frighten things away. There's a little mite on him there. They're a commensal mite. They don't suck his blood or do any harm. They simply keep him clean and he carries them around and takes them to fresh food sources. So it's like a symbiotic relationship, partly. So this is just going to little quarantine setup. We've got a little bit of court bark in there for them to hide under. Make sure they're okay. Come on, we'll have a look at you. Oh, he's really prickly. Oh, he's really cross. He's going to escape. Hold on. Who could tell? My hissing cockroach, he's never hissed because they're all used to being handled. <laughs> this big old boy. Oh, not so much. Look at him go. Anyway, we'll get his girlfriend in there. And set him up and he can have a bit of peace, bless him. Giant tiger hissing cockroach. Look at these. So these are eyed hawk moth caterpillars that were given to me by Uncle Pete and Auntie Diane. And of course, the next few school, um, for the summer camps I go to, fascinating things to see for the children. But very quickly, they'll be pupa. 
waiting for next year to turn into some fantastic eyed hawk moths. Look at those. They're gonna grow a lot, lot bigger. Here's the female. Now what you haven't seen is it's just took me 45 minutes to show you her because when I got her out of the box, I dropped her, broke her fall with my foot and she promptly bounced onto the floor. I went under that 10 millimeter gap under that vivarium. Oh dear, oh dear, which wasn't gonna be moved. <laughs> so there's the naughty girl there. There's the blockage to stop her escaping while I fashioned a thin poking rod <laughs> because that one was too wide. <laughs> All in a day's work to gently poke her out from under there. What a naughty girl. Then you can see typical hissing cockroach on her on her thorax here, which looks like her head on a hissing cockroach. She's just got little dimples and the males have those sort of bigger horns, great little things. Time to secure her back in with a boyfriend. A runaway hissing cockroach. There she goes. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to see if I can film some of these fish underwater. A whole shoal of gudgeon down there. It'd be really good if we could sort of see them at their level. I haven't really got a long pole. I've got my camera tripod, but we'll see what we can do. Hi guys, thanks for watching this channel. If you tend to pop here and pop back again uh, and you haven't subscribed, do us a favor, please subscribe. It's an embryonic channel and it's lovely to see it growing weekly, but subscribing is a thing that really helps this channel grow uh, into a, a channel. You know, lovely to see if we can get sort of some sort of nice round numbers by a year of life of the channel. So please subscribe if you haven't already. It really pushes YouTube to sort of share the videos and make them pop up on people's feeds. Without liking the videos or subscribing, the channel doesn't really go very far without social media promotion. So please do me a favor, just click on it, help me out. If you don't like all the genres, you know there's gonna be videos that you like, ignore the other ones or stick around and see if you do like them. All oh, the sun's out now, I'm gonna get back to filming fish. A little brain like that. Not too far away. Those two there in the centre.
nice to find a grass snake laying on the riverbank. But it's nearly 30 degrees today. In general, way too hot for our reptiles to be out in the middle of the day. We've got an English man. I've not ever seen a mad dog. What else has been going on this week? Well, Kyle's young peregrine, Marty, who's still at Tame Hack, um, he hit 4,000 feet high, soaring on a thermal this week. 4,000 feet. It's something, it's some, don't quote me on this, 5,200 feet, I think, is a mile. So that bird, at eight weeks old, is almost flying a mile high. How ludicrous is that? Eight weeks old, what do you know? And yet you can manage to fly nearly a mile high in the sky. He's hit over, two, uh, not two, he's hit over a hundred mile an hour already, stooping from the thermals, um, just in play. How ridiculous. Eight weeks old, you fly nearly a mile high and you can exceed a hundred miles an hour in flight. Peregrine falcons are certainly a highly tuned evolutionary beast indeed. He's looking good. He's still not caught anything for himself yet. He still comes home for his food every evening and has a little bit of breakfast in the morning. He's just learning to find his wings and enjoying this weather. Not so much today, but if you see those big fluffy cumulus clouds like you see on the, the start of the Simpsons, that tells you the thermals are there and that is weather for all of our birds to really just float up in the air. It was something like 49 feet a second without flapping his wings, he was ascending into the sky on thermals. 49 feet a second. How fast is that going up without flapping your wings? Anyway, I'll have a little poke around here. See what we can see. At this point, the river goes slow. We've got some locks down there. And everything's slowing down. It's shallow. The gravel bottom's given away to silt. Brandy bottle lilies are in profusion. Let's further slow down the flow and build up more silt and feeds those aquatic plants. Much shallower here with just a deeper patch in the middle. Lots and lots of roach, really versatile fish roach, but those lazy areas of rivers, certainly absolute havens for roach. Some small stuff there. It's been great today. We've seen roach, we've seen dace, we've seen gudgeon, we've seen small little tiny baby bream chub all the smaller stuff in the shallower water but the sounds of popping and plopping and fish rising and it's just us it's just us you and me we are so lucky and i'm so lucky that i can bring you here literally on the doorstep of where i live but you can go to places like this too, all over Britain. It's not usually far away. Even city centres have got canals and ponds and lakes and things. Even those city centre waterways will be full of life, even reptiles and amphibians. Just get yourselves out there. Get your kids out there. It's the best place to be. And again, we had a couple of tiny skimmer bream, but they don't like being filmed apparently and again the water weeds have changed dramatically the slower stretch here buzzing alive absolutely thriving with insect life i'm so pleased that this local river is just chock full of life it really really is and that's a really good sign if you've got this many fish you've got an awful lot of invertebrates in and around the waterway and you've got a lot of food for higher animals like kingfishers herons Ugh, cormorants and even the naughty otters. I'm just going to have a look down there. Look at this golden English countryside. Absolutely baked alive. Now, I don't know whether that's a house, but I like it. There is a fish missing from down here. The fish of my childhood, which you could have netted along here and put in a jam jar to have a better look. That's a three spine stickleback. Really was the tiddler of my day. And anywhere like this. Would have been three spine sticklebacks just cruising up and down the sort of the wall of the canals and things. 
sadly very rarely seen now in Northampton. Okay, a good wild harvest. Jack has got, oh, I don't know, probably three three pounds of blackberries in there. A blackberry full. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, <laughs> there's going to be some food there. I've got some sallow to feed the eyed hawk moth caterpillars. And in here, in here, a half a dozen bloody nose beetles. Um, so Jack is wild foraging. I ended up foraging for beetles for my school talks. Really cracking little dumpy shaped beetles, as you'll see or you have seen on the vlog so far. Um, dozens of them out this evening. I don't think nature's gonna miss five or six of those for some really important education and conservation talks. Uh, they only eat bed straw, so next job, find some ladies' bed straw. <laughs> Look at this beauty, cinnabar moth caterpillar. You've got to love a caterpillar. Look at these down here. So they're a, a ragwort eating caterpillar. So if you like your horses, these are definitely your friends. There's probably not enough of them in your fields. Eating this sort of semi-invasive weed that's very poisonous. So they take the toxins in, use the toxin of the plant to stop them being eaten by birds, tasting bad and being poisonous. And they wear their lovely colors just to make sure everyone knows they're a toxic caterpillar as is the moth, which is lovely, sort of blackish with red, whoops, with red stripes and a couple of spots there. Beautiful, cinnabar moth caterpillar, wearing his little jersey. go over there it looks a bit snaky but I can't get over the fence in this countryside when the sky is blue especially when the sky is blue because it's usually a rarity not this summer but isn't it the most beautiful place even even with a drought summer the green and pleasant land it really is compared to many parts of the world absolute soul food right there just get out your rat race life for 10 minutes half an hour 20 minutes even recharge date on the European glass lizards or shelter pusics or European legless lizards so as we said last time we met them they've shed their skins and most of their damage remember these came to me as rescue animals as wild very badly battered imports that damage now is very light scarring which when they shed their skin next time will be very good indeed so I'm really pleased I would say they've doubled in body weight, properly hydrated, fed a huge varied diet, properly porky, and that's how I wanted them to really stack on the weight and get that weight, sort of like the store of fat really that a lot of these lizards keep in their tail to a degree. It's really good to see those. Really want these to be 
in outdoor enclosures next summer. Um, if so, be prepared for a very cold, wet summer, which isn't it be my fault. <laughs> they do like it quite warm indeed. And yet hibernation around five degrees C or below. They're from somewhere that's a hot summer and a crazy cold winters. Fantastic animals, I love them. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed being in the English countryside as much as I have on this video. It is nice to get a bit of downtime from you know the day job of going to schools every day. I haven't got time to go fishing, which is kind of sad, uh, but at least I've had time to go and enjoy the river, enjoy fish spotting. Do me that big favor, please click on subscribe, like the videos if you like them, check out the playlists, uh, even if it's just that sort of single playlist genre that's for you. I know most of you watching this are falconers, uh, but I do want to vary that audience because my life, as much as it's about falconry and birds of prey, it really is all about the natural world, conservation. As you guys know, I love my reptiles and snakes too. See you in the next video. Thanks a lot again. Mm -hmm.